As most of you guys know, Halloween is right around the corner, and to honor that, I figured why not use the spookiest and scariest weapons in Elden Ring, specifically the Scythes, or the Reapers, whatever you want to call them. However, there are only four of them in the entire game, so I'm going to be tacking on the second scariest weapon class, the Claws, for a grand total of eight armaments. So sit back, relax, and let's get sp spooky. And for the first scythe of the day, here we have the scythe with Occult Affinity and Phantom Slash. And the reason why I'm going with Occult Affinity is because this weapon does have innate bleed. And as a matter of fact, every single scythe does. But getting a first look at the light attack string, here is what it looks like. This is the light attack string that every single scythe has. However, this weapon specifically is the only one with a unique heavy attack string. And it looks like this. I'm telling you right now, it's not the easiest to hit, at least in PvP. PvE is obviously a different story. But then you got the jumping light, the jumping heavy, the running light, the running heavy. Then you got the crouch attack, and then the backstep attack. And I'm noticing that this backstep attack is pretty similar to the Great Axe backstep attack. And the Ash of War Phantom Slash I think really fits the theme of today's video. Basically, you send out a ghost guy to do a initial swing, and then you do a follow-up. And there is a second stage. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot to mention that every single weapon that I'm going to be using today has anti-block properties, which means that you can do damage through shields on every single one of your attacks. And trust me, that can really come in handy in some situations. Okay, who do we have here? I have no faith. Oh god, okay, Sacred Blade, I see. I think you're lying to me. I think you do have faith. Oh man. Oh! Oh! Oh, wow. And there you have it. That is the normal scythe. And I think Phantom Slash can be sort of a tricky Ash of War to go up against because it's two stages, you can do it from a lot of different distances, and the tracking is really, really good. And if you have a status effect on top of that, you can get some insane damage. And I'm not totally sure if this is the case, but it felt like the final light attack that we hit after Phantom Slash true comboed. Again, I'm not sure, but it's definitely something to look at. And to get the scythe, you will first need to make it to Liurnia of the Lakes and go to the Cliff Bottom Catacombs. And once you are towards the end of this dungeon, you will find a staircase to go up into a room, and the scythe is in there. And moving on to the second scythe of the day, here I have one that will really make you feel like the Grim Reaper. This is the Grave Scythe. I'm going with Heavy Affinity and Spinning Strikes for my Asha War. Of course, you do get the Innate Bleed, but since we basically just used a Bleed build, I figured why not switch things up. And unlike the normal scythe, this does not have any unique attacks. So here is the first look at the basic scythe heavy attack string. And if I'm being honest, I am not a huge fan of these heavy attacks either. You know, you get these crazy wind-up animations for attacks that just really aren't that exciting. And as for spinning strikes, you hold your weapon above your head and spin it around, and then you get a light attack follow-up, or you get a heavy attack follow-up which I think the heavy attack follow-up is one of the most badass attacks in the entire game. And on top of having innate bleed as well as anti-block, this weapon also raises your vitality. And in case you didn't know, vitality is basically your resistance to death blight, so it really doesn't come in handy that often. All right, our second opponent of the day, Rogue. Hello, Rogue. Okay, you did spell Rogue wrong, but hey, I won't flame you too hard. It's all right. It's a simple mistake. <laughs> okay, so one little spin of the weapon did close to 500 on spinning strikes. Pretty cool. Damn it. Oh my god. 
Okay, some serious lag going on here. Are you okay, Rogue? Are you okay? Come here. Damn, there's no hyper armor on those attacks. <laughs> hey, hey, good fight, Rogue. So, really solid damage out of the Grave Scythe. However, I do think if Spinning Strikes had some sort of hyper armor, maybe on like the follow up attacks. I think it would be a lot better of an Ash of War, at least in PvP, but overall the Grave Scythe is a strong weapon. However, the only thing that sucks about it is the fact that you do have to farm for it. It has a 2% chance to drop from the Skeleton Mages that wield it, and I believe that the earliest and best place to farm for this thing is near the lake-facing cliffside of Grace. If you head west from here, you will find a graveyard that has three different Skeleton Mages that are all wielding the Scythe. Okay, now I don't want to get too ahead ahead of myself here because we still have two enchanted scythes to use but I do just want to let you know right now that one of the claws that we're going to end up using is one of if not the best weapon in the entire game so just make sure that you're preparing yourselves for that anyways next up here I have what is my personal favorite scythe out of the entire weapon class the halo scythe with its ash of war Mikola's ring of light and the Halo Scythe does not have any unique attacks or any properties outside of the innate bleed and the anti-block. And because of that, I'm actually going to go ahead and power stance these. And here is what the moveset looks like. And if I'm being honest, I think this is the coolest part of Scythes. It feels very, very fluid, and it's basically the same power stance moveset that the Halberds have. And then the Ash of War Mikola's Ring of Light is surprisingly good. Basically, you swing your weapon and you spawn this delayed projectile. And the swing that you do with your weapon can do damage to people if they get too close. Alright, who is this? Goose. Hello, Goose. I'm kind of worried. The Knight Rider Glaive is very, very strong. Oh, I rolled. Maybe I was out of stamina. I wasn't looking. Ooh, that was clean. Wait, why am I just using the one-handed moveset? Oh. <laughs> Hey, good fight, Goose. I feel like they were just putting so much pressure on me that I had to resort to the one-handed moveset, because while this power stance moveset is fun to use and it is fluid, it is pretty slow. And I guess I could go as far to say that this weapon is underrated. However, you can just get the Ash of War Sacred Ring of Light, which is basically a smaller version of Mikola's Ring of Light. Not to mention that you do have to farm for this weapon, and it is a total chore. It has a 2% chance to drop from the lesser clean rot knights that wield it, and the best place to farm for it is in Aeonia Swamp in the middle of Kaelid. You can farm for every single clean rot weapon, as well as the entire clean rot set here. Like, there's genuinely no reason to farm for it anywhere else. And for the fourth and final scythe of the video, here I have the Winged Scythe with its unique Ash of War, Angel's Wings. And I do just want to start off by saying, I absolutely love this weapon's design. As for this thing's moveset, it does not get any unique attacks. However, the Ash of War is a very, very unique. It is basically a holy version of Loretta's Slash. And if you hit somebody with this, they will not be allowed to use flasks for a certain duration, which makes this very, very useful for invasions. Like, let's say you hit a host and his co-op summon with the Ash of War at the same time, they are not going to be able to heal. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the flask debuff only lasts like 15 seconds. But trust me, taking away someone's ability to use flasks can really send them into panic mode. And since you cannot use healing flasks in duels, I figured why not jump into an invasion? Alright, where are we? Oh, it looks like it's just a fight club or something? Frost V2. All right, well, let it be a good fight then. Yeah, no flasks for you, big dog.
No flasks for you, big dog. <laughs> I could tell they were like, wait, what the hell? Why can I heal? <laughs> they had to bring out that bestial vitality. Hey, even though it was just one opponent, still a valid showcase. Now, if I'm being honest, I don't think that the winged scythe is the best weapon in the world. I don't think it's anything amazing. Whenever you're just looking at the damage output and the moveset, this weapon is average at best. However, the fact that you can prevent people from using flasks, I gotta say that is a very, very awesome property to have on a weapon. Do I wish that it was on something other than a scythe? Yes, but still this weapon serves its purpose. And all you have to do to get the winged scythe is head to the Tombsward Ruins in the Weeping Peninsula. And within these ruins is a downward staircase that leads to a room, and in that room is the winged scythe. Now it is time to move on to the claw weapon class. But before we do that, do me a quick favor and comment down below your favorite scythe. And then once we get through the claws, you can go edit your comment and say your favorite claw. Oh, and subscribe, please. Now for the first claws of the video, here I have the hook claws with keen affinity and impaling thrust. And similar to the scythes, claws also get anti-block properties and innate bleed. Getting a first look at the claw moveset, here is the light attack string. Then you have the heavy attack string. You got the jumping light. The Jumping Heavy, Running Light, Running Heavy, and then the Crouch Attack, and the Backstep Attack. And the name of the game with Claws is Pressure. You constantly just want to be in your opponent's face, just wailing on them. And every single Claw is infusible, sadly there are no Enchanted Claws. Which may be a little bit disheartening to hear, but trust me, the last Claw that we're gonna get to, like I said earlier, it is one of the best weapons in the game, if not the best weapon. All right, who do we have here? What is your name? Bray Beastman. Ooh, I like this build already. Looks pretty creative, looks very, very unique. Oh, wow. I was not expecting to hit that second one. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Just the amount of pressure that you can keep up with claws is absolutely ridiculous. No status effect, no crazy Ash of War, and the damage output is still solid. The moveset is uber fast, and in general, the hook claws are just a solid weapon. And for all you guys who want to use the hook claws, luckily for you, you don't have to farm for it. It is a guaranteed pickup off of a corpse in Stormvale Castle. Once you reach the main gate, go ahead and talk to the gatekeeper and take the secret back way around the castle, and the claws can easily be found once you reach the wine cellar area. Moving on, here I have the Bloodhound Claws with Occult Affinity and Lifesteal Fist. And I know this may not be the most optimal affinity or the most optimal Ash of War to use on the Bloodhound Claws, but, but listen, it's not too often that I get to use Lifesteal Fist in these weapon showcases. So whenever it's available, I gotta use it. As for the moveset, it is the exact same as the Hook Claws. So, nothing really unique here. And fun fact, whenever you do get the Bloodhound's Claws, they actually come with Bloodhound Step already on it. So, that's pretty cool. But then for all you guys who are unfamiliar with Lifesteal Fist, here is what it looks like. This is an Ash of War that needed buffs for the longest time and eventually got them. But basically, you just jab your fist into someone and you get very, very solid damage and lifesteal. All right, whose life am I going to steal? Enyo. Hello, Enyo. What is up? Oh, you got a nice hero build, it looks like, except with the partisan, not the battle axe. <laughs> okay, so you can tank a spear with lifesteal fist. That's wild. Also, that did a lot of damage. I was expecting it to be just a little bit less. I really want to finish it off with this jumping attack. Come on, Enyo. Let me do it to you. Damn it. 
<laughs> okay. Hey, good fight, Enyo. Honestly, I'm gonna have to do some more testing with Lifesteal Fist and see how it interacts against other weapons, you know, in terms of hyper armor and stuff like that. And overall, I mean, the Bloodhound Claws are not too different from the Hook Claws. I believe that the Hook Claws are more geared towards Dex and the Bloodhound Claws are more quality, but I think that's the only difference, really. And the Bloodhound Claws are a guaranteed drop from the Lesser Bloodhound Knight that is found in the basement of Volcano Manor. Moving on to the third claw weapon, here I have the Venomous Fang with Occult Affinity and Storm Stomp. This is one of the few weapons that does come with innate poison, but not only that, it is Deadly Poison. And basically, Deadly Poison lasts a third of the time compared to regular poison. However, during the shorter duration, you get more damage per tick. And there are two main ways to run this weapon. The first is how I'm going to be using it with Occult Affinity. So you get that increased poison buildup and a lot of your physical damage comes from Arcane. Or you can run it with Poison Affinity, which will most likely give you less physical damage and a tad bit less of poison buildup. However, if you have Poison Affinity on the Venomous Fang, you will still proc Deadly Poison, except for the normal poison duration. So basically, your opponent has Deadly Poison for 90 seconds instead of 30. Except that is not going to matter too much in a duel, so I'm just going for a cult. And I really wish I could say that this weapon has unique attacks, but sadly, it does not. And I'm actually just very happy with the fact that they didn't give the Venomous Fang the Serpent Bone Blade treatment, because on the Serpent Bone Blade, you do get Innate Poison, and it is Deadly Poison. However, you cannot change the Ash of War. Noita, hello, how you doing? Oh, damn. I'm kind of expecting to roll catch with this running R2, but not really, uh, not really working. All right, let's just go up and storm stomp. And there is the poison. Let's see if they have boluses. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. Hey, but your health is whittling. It's going down. He drinks the flask. What's he gonna do? <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> Honestly, it is such a scummy way to end a fight, but at least it was deadly poison, so it was over quicker. And obviously, Storm Stomp on quick weapons is going to be good. It basically gives you guaranteed damage as long as you can land Storm Stomp, which that in and of itself is very, very easy to do. Overall, just a fantastic setup. I love the Venomous Fang. I wish more weapons had innate poison, and I also wish that there were more poison ashes of war. Please, FromSoft, can we get more poison stuff in this game? I need it. And now it is time for the final weapon of the video, and by far the best weapon that is going to be showcased in this video, the Raptor Talons. I'm going with Keen Affinity and Quick Step, as well as some Drawstring Blood Grease to put on my weapon. And the Raptor Talons do have a unique property where jumping attacks get a slight damage boost of 10%, so that's kind of cool. But really the best part about this weapon is the unique heavy attacks. Here's what they look like charged. Now, even though the charged versions look really badass, you are going to want to use the uncharged versions. Just look how fast these attacks come out. And the reason why people are starting to call this the best weapon in the game is because if you hit an uncharged heavy attack, it immediately true combos into the second one. I don't know why this is the case. It's really dumb, but yeah, it's a thing. So all you really gotta do is throw on Blood Flame Blade, or in my case, Blood Grease and just go hog wild. Oh, and also, I don't know why I had Quick Step on. You definitely want Endure for this setup. Unless you want the style points of slipping and sliding around with Quick Step. Who am I gonna spook? Who is this? Metaborn. Hello, Metaborn. How you doing? Oh, that's a lot of damage. Shout out Phil Swift. Oh, nice. That was good. Oh. <laughs> hey, what a way to end it off. Good fight, Metaborn.
And there you have it. This setup right here, along with some Blood Grease or Blood Flame Blade. And honestly, I would recommend Blood Flame Blade just because of the fact that Drawstring Blood Grease doesn't really last that long. But no, the heavy combo on Raptor Talons is absolutely absurd. And if you think that it looked good in that fight, just wait till you use this setup in PvE. It is so broken in PvE, trust me. And if you want the Raptor's Talons, just make your way to Sage's Cave. And in this cave, there are several fake walls, and behind some of those walls is a chest with the Raptor Talons inside. And that concludes our spooky scythe slash claw weapon showcase. I do believe though that these weapon classes both need to get expanded upon in DLC. Even just an enchanted claw weapon would be nice. Make sure to comment down below what your favorite claw is and your favorite scythe if you haven't already. If you enjoyed the video, smash the like. And if you are a true spooky skeleton, make sure that you click that subscribe and that noti bell. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe out there. Have a good Halloween. You guys are the best. See ya!